Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. We are back on the Timber Bridge project today. This is a wooded piece of property that my wife and I just recently purchased. It butts up against the Hoosier National Forest and there's a creek that cuts right down the middle of it that we can't cross with the tractor or the side-by-side -side that we currently own. So we're building this crossing so we can get to the other side. One, to maintain it, and two, we plan on building a small primitive campsite over there for our family to enjoy up against the National Forest boundary. You can see the work we have done up to this point. If you want to watch some of those videos to see how we got to this point, check out the description. There'll be some links for some videos in there as well. Also, we'll have some info cards flashing up throughout the video. We're going to start off with our oldest. She's going to come down and help me out, kind of get some of the mess cleaned up that we've made so far. And then we're going to work on getting another log across here and a little bit more explanation of how we plan on finishing this bridge out. So you can see as we look around, there's a little maple we had to cut down. It was right there in the middle. There's a bunch of debris down in the creek that we threw down whenever we were working on this. There's some stuff from where we milled everything off and just some general dead trees in the area. The goal is to get all this cleaned up down there in that corner and burn up out of the way so that this thing can flow uninhibited and not have any issues there. I brought her oldest with us today because she's going to kind of help get stuff down there. Be less trips in and out for me. So that's what we're running with today. The Husqvarna 55 or gas saw is still messed up. I did get a hold of Logger Wade though, and Logger Wade's going to take a look at it, so I'm excited about that. He'll get it straightened out for me, I'm sure of it. But this is what we have today, and it'll work just fine for the little bit amount we're cutting. It's fine, it's perfect. I didn't even have to move. Don't spin and throw, there you go, that's perfect. Love it. We have this side all cleaned up and done. Piled up down there in a pretty decent pile. She's already got a little bit of head start on that side. Can you take the saw, please, and go to that side? Of course, my file's not that sharp either. It's the following morning. We're gonna come down here, see if we can get this pile lit off. By the way, check it out. My youngest, our five-year-old, got a face painting kit. She gave me a pretty sweet tattoo sleeve this morning. So if you're seeing that and wondering what it is, that's exactly what it is. We'll be rocking it today until it sweats off anyway. Let's see if we can get that going. We don't use a lot of firewood. We don't heat with it. We just use it for camp outs. And anymore, a lot of places don't let you bring firewood in because they don't want you spreading disease or bugs, which makes sense. So mainly just 
we're gonna do camp outs around the property or if we decide we're gonna cook out one night sometimes we'll go out to the woods and cook dinner outside now this is pretty easy splitting Might as well take it. Don't even have to get a full swing on it. There's this little lip on this side. It's nothing too crazy, and honestly, probably wouldn't hurt anything to leave it, but uh, I bought this ads and I have no idea how to use it. And I thought, what a good opportunity to get a few swings with it. Let's see if I can find a rhythm. Anyway, I'm gonna try to clean that lip up. And I may do a little clean it up on the other log over there too. Somebody commented the other day, it doesn't have to be perfect, and that's true, it doesn't. But I still like it to be a little bit better than what it is. side looks pretty good I crawled over to that side and started uh, doing a little bit but you're not gonna believe this it is hot on that log I think I'm not 100% sure I'm not really a scientist but I think it has something to do with the uh, the fire and heat rises thing that's my guess that's my best guess of why it's hot right there okay we're not doing truck work today I have that scraper, that floor scraper that worked pretty good for debarking the other day, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use this ads. I'm just kind of trying to get familiar with it and the way it feels in my hand. I didn't notice this until I got into it with the ads here, but it's got a big crack. Starts here, comes all the way around to here, which means that log is useless for what I want it for. Also, got really carried away and just started making a daggone log cabin from the 18th century. Not really sure what happened there. Just felt good, I guess. Anyway, the main thing is that's not gonna work. Okay, well I gotta find a piece that will.
No. Oh, all the way down. Right there. Come here. Draw knife would work good too. I'm slowly collecting some tools I've always wanted. I finally have a little ads. I need to treat the handle yet, oil the handle. I'd like to get a draw knife. I'd like to get a cant hook. There's a lot of things I'd like to get, but it all costs money and it takes time to get it all. So that log, the one we just the Barton cut that's nine foot in length, that actually goes on the bottom side of those two runners. I wanted to make sure I had one down here that was gonna work. We're gonna go look for another tree later. A couple trees we gotta drag down, and I wanted to see if I need to drag down a third one for that piece, but that one should work fine. So we're good to go for the time being. It's just gonna sit there. The next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get these two runners, whatever you wanna call them, bumped out to the width they need to be. <laughs> It's five foot center to center. I'm looking for six foot center to center. The driving deck itself, man, it is hot above the fire. I know that's hard to believe. The driving surface itself will be seven foot. Ooh, we're getting close. Oh, <laughs> how about, yeah, right there. There we go. Center, center, six foot. Okay, same thing on the other end. This is the other part to one of the trees we cut down for those runners. I said we'd be using it, it wouldn't go to waste. I'm gonna get down there. It's gonna be right. There. We'll just go a little bit at a time on it. And whatever it can't cut, well, we'll just split it the rest of the way. That should be fine. These are gonna go on each end of those runners. We'll kind of attach them on there. That'll help hold the width until we get the planks on there. And they'll stay on there permanently. It'll be a permanent fixture of the bridge. But that way it's kind of locked into place for us. That's the goal of what we're doing. I can't believe I just filled up oil without spilling any. I didn't even think that was possible. Probably ought to pour some on the bar for good measure. Okay. I started with half a battery. That one ended up dying. Went back to the house. This one had half battery as well. It's down to one bar now, but essentially a full battery to rip this. I did start, stop and sharpen the chain when I swapped batteries out, but exceeds my expectations. I mean, the cut's done. What more could I want? See if we can get these back to the Ranger. I think I can just slide them in back. Ranger's a little faster than the tractor is. I know, hard to believe. He's made a ball, so what? Oh, it's fine. You guys aren't missing anything. It's fine. Oh, 
Careful now. We'll go this way. Perfect. I've got these old pole barn nails from where we built the barn. They're just, I don't know, that's probably five inches, five and a half inches with ring shank on them. It'll at least hold them in place for now. I don't have my frame and hammer with me today. When you have 27,000 projects going on, all your tools end up getting spread out all over the place. This is looking great. This is looking really, really great. I'm, it just keeps exceeding my expectations. So there is one thing I feel like I should clear up and probably has caused the most confusion out of all of it. I keep calling this a temporary bridge. My definition of temporary, I'm looking to get five years out of this. If we can get five years of side-by-side -side and tractor use out of this bridge, we're gonna call that a win. Eventually we plan on building a more permanent bridge out of concrete and steel and the whole nine yards that we can get a concrete truck across to a couple building sites that are behind you, which is where we're trying to get to. But for the time being, we just want access to the property. We plan on building a little primitive campsite back there that we can use, getting a nice canvas tent and put back there that we can kind of use for ourselves. Just five years for side-by-side -side, tractor, four-wheeler foot traffic, that kind of thing. I fully anticipate after we do build down the line a larger stronger permanent bridge we'll still keep this thing around for foot traffic and four wheelers and that kind of thing but when i say temporary i'm looking for five years so when it seems like i'm doing a lot of work for a temporary bridge yeah i probably am but if i'm doing a lot of work for a bridge that we can get five years out of i'd say we're right on track for that the next big step in this i'm looking for a very particular type of tree for the sides of this and i think it'll all kind of start to make sense once you see what i'm talking about we're looking for some trees that have a little bit of a c shape to them not too aggressive just a little arch to them and you guys all know what the c stands for cool bridge culvert what cool bridge yep did you say culvert c shot i'm gonna check over here probably okay I'd like to have two of similar size. I'm looking at that one right there. I'd like to have two of similar size. I think that'd be better than one that we have to rip in half. Leave the tree as whole as possible. I don't think that tree has a top. I think that tree's just dead. Might not be anything worth. Oh, she's dead all right. 
Oh. <laughs> All right. So that's just pulp. Well, that's a shame. That's about the perfect shape I'm after. Okay. Hmm. I mean, it's alive, so you know it's a decent tree. I hate to take a live tree for this. And it's got a good curve that way. Well, let's remember this for one. The curve is not as aggressive on the bottom end, but the higher up it gets, it gets pretty good. It's definitely a little thinner than the other one. She's in good shape though. Anyway, I'm gonna look around just a little bit more, see if I can find a, another one, but I'm, I'm really happy with that one and the first one. I think we can definitely get those two to work. In fact, I might take the electric saw and go ahead and cut that one down and drag it down there just so you can kind of have a little visualization of the effect we're going for. I think I'm gonna do that. I might as well, got nothing else to do today. This one, it's going on this side. That's why we're fighting it so much. We're getting real close though, and it's in a spot where it can't really go anywhere. I promised Chelsea I'd move some dirt over to one of the new flower beds she's making. So that's what I'm doing the rest of the evening. On shift tomorrow, I'm gonna come back off shift, see if we can get this one in place and get you a little bit better picture of how the overall project is gonna look. And the exciting thing, well, I'll tell you at the end of the video. If you can see it, but right in here, there's a big old fat raccoon just hanging out. I got you zoomed in as much as the GoPro zooms in. They're not big on the zoom. pretty equal and I like where we're at on everything I'm gonna go ahead and cut to length on this side now I want to cut a little bit of a flat spot here and I'm just gonna line that up just eyeballing down the log
have everything cut how I want it or the best I can get it with the tools that I have or the equipment I have. I've got a ratchet strap on each end kind of holding it in to try to avoid any of the go where we don't wantage. I've got a million ways I want to try this in my head and I keep going back and forth on all of them and honestly the best thing I know to do in this scenario is just quit thinking and just let my dang hands do the work. I mean they probably know what needs to be done so let's just trust them. I'm sitting in there to maintain that for me. Well, chalk there. That holds it. keep rolling it but at the same time we're gonna have to pull it in too you know I'm not 100% sure if this is a good idea yeah probably not okay that thing wants to Ooh. oh I think with a hammer I can tap this end in and that's gonna make that end do what it's gonna do oh I see what she's doing too let me get a hammer Basically, we're gonna get this in where it needs to be, and we'll get a nail in it just to hold it in place. Go! Woo! Made a feller nervous. Good news is, look, but don't let it go any further. Didn't let it go any further. Oh, she was close, wasn't she? She wanted to go further. Man, okay. There's actually in there. Okay. So this is where we're gonna leave this today. There's still quite a bit of carving and fitting to get these to sit in here the way I want them to, but I'm kind of tired of carving with that little Ryobi. It's a good little saw and it's got its purpose. Carving timber for bridges is probably not that purpose. I did talk to Logger Waite. He did say he'd take a look at that 55 for me. So I gotta get that dropped off at his place. We get that back, then we'll get back on this project. It's not a lot of arch, but I think it'll be enough to add a little bit of support. I've got some nails in here now, just kind of holding it, and I'm gonna leave those straps on so it doesn't the rest of the way over. Long-term plan, a through bolt from here to here, probably two of them on each end to really pull those in and suck them tight and hold it in there nice. That's the long-term plan. Again, that other true we found, that'll go on this side, obviously. And then we're gonna add a third stringer or runner right down the middle, and then two inch rough sawn boards for the planks across it. We have that peel and stick waterproofing left over from the YouTube Yacht Project. I think I'm gonna cut it in strips, and before we put the planking down, I'm just gonna lay that down on there, on both of those, and put the planking down on top of it. Really good news is the bandsaw blades. If you remember, my friend has a Woodland Mills bandsaw he's gonna let me borrow that to do a bunch of milling we're gonna build a small goat barn because we'd like to get some goats some planking for this and then we want to try to do a shelter house kit out of it for the pond project 
those finally shipped. So hopefully in a couple weeks, we'll have some bandsaw blades and then we can work on getting the bandsaw mill up here. Here's the order of operations for what's coming up in the next month or so. We're walking off of this because we're going back to the YouTube Yacht Project. I remember we kind of took this on as something to do that was budget friendly while we were waiting for YouTube revenue to get to the next step. Words today, just, they're just, God, they're not coming to me. So we can get to the next step on the YouTube Yacht. Uh, we've got a little bit more YouTube revenue. So I've got a car full of plumbing supplies and I got some loads of stone ordered. So we're gonna work on the plumbing and the backfill on the inside for the slab on the inside. That'll be what's coming up next. I did promise Dirt Perfect some work days. So we got some Dirt Perfect stuff coming up as well. And then at the end of August, I have the whole second half of August off once we get out of training. So when we do that, we're hitting the pond. You guys already saw the sheep's foot rollers at the barn. Mike is loving his new 850, by the way. If you're not watching Dirt Perfect and you haven't seen his new 850 dozer, I don't think he has any videos up on YouTube yet, but he does have stuff on his Facebook and Instagram. So check that out. He got a new 850J, I believe, and he's been loving it, which means the older 850 is sitting down at the lot. It's good to go whenever we want it, he said. And then whenever we're going to go, he said, just let him know. We'll get the 120 or 140 up here, one of the two. So we have the whole second half of August to get the pond up and going and get that thing polished off and finished off. And I'm very excited to do that. We will be back to two videos a week at the end of August as well, once I get out of training. Just a reminder, I do have some training with my full-time career right now, and that's taking up a lot of time. So I'm doing my 24 hour shifts and my nine to five work with the training, which means I don't have a lot of time to come out here and work on these projects. So we're just one video a week for the next couple of weeks, but then in August, we'll be back to the Thursday and Sunday uploads like we typically do. So I'm pretty excited about that. Also, if you're just looking for some extra content because I'm only doing one a week or you just want some great content in general, go check out my wife's channel. It's called Wild Roots, link in the description. Mike, do not forget this info card. She has two new videos up. Uh, she has a, our Hocking Hills trip where we went to Hocking Hills and did some hiking and she should have up by now the Brown County trip. We went to Brown County State Park and did some camping there or stayed in one of their, their uh, cabins there. So you might hop over and check that out and just, you know, tell her I sent you, tell her I said, hey, tell her the bridge is going fine and there's no need to worry about anything. If you just, if you wouldn't mind doing that for me, I certainly would appreciate it. I think that's enough talking for now. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.